Hello, my name is Taylor Kemp, and today I will be presenting MyPack, a lightweight quality predictor for approximate iterative computing. So as applications move to the edge, for example, we can consider uh, health monitoring on an iWatch or uh, image filtering on a GoPro. Many of these devices are actually heavily energy limited. And so a lot of the techniques that we may have applied on larger computing systems with, you know, not bound by energy may not actually work. And so when we start talking about signal processing or machine learning or image processing, a lot of these actually applications are very robust to errors. As a result, we can use the robustness to error to reduce the energy consumption on these devices. So one actually type of approximation that we can use to reduce the energy consumption is iterative approximate computing. And the way that this works is we will, with more iterations or more time, will improve the quality of our you know, approximation. So types of these approximations are logarithmic multipliers are a type of circuit approximation. Another type is actually Taylor series approximations for dividers or exponential units. And so this is actually looking at, this example is looking at how to do this for an exponential unit. And so we could consider at a high level, maybe a image filter that's trying to, um, you know, run some sort of filter over a toucan image. And if we want a really, you know, low power uh, solution, we can take a first order approximation of e to the x. And maybe it gives us this really grainy image. And let's say, you know, we want to improve the quality. Well, we can take a second order and we can actually improve this quality right here. And, you know, as we take a third term, maybe it gets to be an exact image. And so what we notice is that this quality improves with each iteration. And, and so we can have these progressive quality settings and it can be dynamically quality configurable. And we have this trade-off between energy and you know, quality. So that kind of showed a dependence on the length of time that we run um, the circuit to actually you know, give this quality. Another dependence we actually have is on the input. So this is taken from the Saudi divider. Um, and what we notice is for two cycles, for example, there's actually a wide variation in quality. So even though the average error is only 8.3%, that's not actually very representative of the whole. There's a lot of inputs that have much more error, and there's a lot of inputs that actually have a lot less error. And so one thing that we kind of notice from you know, all of these diagrams is that the average error is not a very good measure of the overall quality of the circuit. So something that we could also look at is, what about like the minimum number of iterations to satisfy some uh, target? So previously we showed that there's a large variation in the error. However, we could also consider what if our application wants a 5% error rate? And that's you know, specifically what they care about. Well, if we run our circuit for three cycles, on average, it might satisfy that 5% target constraint. But for 30% of our inputs, we're actually running additional iterations than we actually need to. And so we're actually consuming extra energy to meet this high-level application target. Similarly, 40% of our inputs aren't even satisfying the target in this case. And so what we realize from this is that there's actually this high dependence on input. And so if we can predict the minimum number of iterations, we can provide finer grain quality control and provide better guarantees to the, to the user in the application. And so predicting this minimum number of iterations is essential. So there's actually a lot of previous work on how to do um, quality prediction from a lightweight perspective. Um, but one of the things is actually, we're actually operating at a lower degree than previous. So in previous applications, they would be things like Roomba, where it would look at k-means clustering or JPEG and these high level algorithms, which take a long time to compute. And the prediction can also take a long time to compute. So this allows them to actually have arithmetic logic units or you know, higher power and performance overhead and additionally, they can actually periodically check the approximate results compared to the exact results. In our problem, however, we're actually looking at an arithmetic logic unit. And so our approximate operation only takes a few cycles and we need a predictor that can actually operate in a single cycle. It can make that prediction in a single cycle. And so we can't afford um, an arithmetic logic unit. We can't afford these high power and performance overheads. And we need to make this prediction for every input. And so this low po power overhead and low area overhead 
means that we really can't consider these previous approaches and we can't consider anything that would use an ALU. So we're going to use something that's purely combinational logic based. So what is our proposed approach? Um, we're presenting MyPAC. It's a, it stands for Minimum Iteration Prediction Accuracy Controller, and it's for iterative approximate circuits. And a couple features that are kind of important to note is that we're providing finer grain quality control to the original circuit. It actually provides more uh, settings than um, originally allowed by the circuit. And we do this by predicting the minimum number of iterations. It's lightweight and lightweight actually relative to our domain. And we do this by actually um, providing combinational logic predictors um, instead of traditional approaches that would use an ALU. Additionally, it's also actually runtime adjustable. So we actually provide multiple quality settings that the user can select between. And we can actually provide more settings than the original iterative circuit. And so with all of these features together, we actually show a 53% reduction in worst case error, and we only have a 1% energy overhead for the predictor. And so it's actually very negligible. So how does using MyPAC differ to not using MyPAC? So the fundamental change is actually this quality to iteration mapping. In previous approaches, it was done on the software side. And so the application would specify a target quality and through offline profiling of the iterative circuit, there would be a mapping from quality to an average cycle count that needs to be performed. And so this cycle count would be spent, sent into the iterative circuit to determine how long to run and the result that gets returned. What we showed previously though, is that this input is something that actually directly impacts the number of cycles we need to run this iterative circuit. So if we can make this quality to iteration mapping be on the hardware side, we can take this input to help determine it. And so what MyPack does is it takes the target quality from the application plus this input from the hardware side and internal signals. And it uses this to determine a better cycle count that's the minimum number of iterations to run this iterative circuit and satisfy the overall quality. And so this provides a better result with a lower energy overhead. And so we do this specifically because the input is only visible on the hardware and not software side. So how do we actually design MyPack? So MyPack has provided a series of quality targets as well as an iterative circuit to look at. So for example, we could consider a divider or a multiplier. And we'll do some offline profiling to determine data sets. And so basically all we're doing here is figuring out for a subset of all inputs, what is the minimum iteration needed for each of those inputs to satisfy an overall set of quality targets. And so this is just building a data set for our model to train on. Once we have our series of data sets, we're gonna actually train our models. And so now we're gonna train these neural networks. And at this point you might think, well, a neural network doesn't seem very low power. Well, what we're gonna do next, once we have these trained models is we're actually gonna convert them into lookup tables and into essentially hardware logic. And so we'll have purely combinational logic and there won't actually be this heavy neural network overhead. Once we have these lo logic tables, we'll actually perform power capping. And so this is actually the last input from the user, which is this power constraint. And essentially all this is doing is making sure that the controller that MyPack produces is not too expensive relative to the application. So the designer will actually specify a percentage of the original circuit that the controller can actually take up in terms of power. And my pack will actually reduce through approximate logic minimization, the power consumption of this predictor to meet the demands. So the first stage in this process is the minimum iteration characterization, which is essentially building a series of data sets, one for each quality target. So the user will specify N quality targets, and these will be used to produce N tables, one, one for each model to be uh, trained or one for each predictor in the controller. The designer will select a series of bit signals from the target application. And this will be used actually for the input of the predictor. It's not actually super important which bit signals are chosen from the target circuit, um, but these are used to actually train on. And so it's important that at least the minimum number are taken. And so the more the merrier. So essentially these input signals will be used for a series of uh, samples to determine the minimum iterations needed to satisfy that quality target. And so once this is actually determined, there's an additional step to this data set, which will come into play later, which is importance. So what the importance is, is essentially 
how much the quality is going to improve with more iterations, and it's the inverse of that. So inputs that will improve a lot with more iterations will actually have a very low importance. Similarly, inputs that actually don't improve much with more iterations will have a very high importance. So once we actually have this series of data sets, we're actually going to train a series of neural networks, one for each data set. So what this neural network will take is the input our internal signals the designer previously specified as the input, and it'll use this to, to feed through a Hadamard product, which is essentially weighting the inputs. So we use the Hadamard product to do pr uh, pruning. However, you could have alternatively done a gradient-based pruning method. We use stochastic gradient descent for training. And so basically this is the architecture that we use. The output is actually a series, is a one-hot encoded uh, iteration count for the iterations needed to run that input to achieve the target quality. So we train this these series of models, one for each data set, and so the output of this stage will be a series of trained neural networks. So now that we have a series of trained neural networks, we're going to want to convert them to lookup tables. So for each quality target, we have a trained neural network from the previous stage. And for this trained neural network, we're actually going to get a series of lookup tables, one for each iteration count that it can predict. The way we're actually going to design these, these lookup tables is essentially we're going to take a subset of the inputs and determine what, what outputs they map to. And this is used in determining whether there's a 1 or a 0 in, in each input. In order to reduce the complexity of this lookup table, we're going to actually prune input features to this neural network. And so the way we do this is if you remember from the previous slide, we had a Hadamard product on the input. And so each feature has a learned weighting for, for how important it is. And so we're actually going to prune not so important features. So for example, this feature right here is not very important. And so we'll prune it. And we'll do this iteratively increasing the weight value to maximize the actual prediction accuracy of the neural network. And in this way, we can actually reduce the complexity of making this lookup table, as well as improving the representation accuracy it has for this lookup table. And so essentially all we're doing in this stage is converting this neural network to a series of lookup tables, several for each quality target. So now that we have a series of lookup tables, we want to convert it to a combinational logic, or we want to convert it to the MyPack controller itself. And we want to make sure that this does not violate the power constraint set out by the designer. So the way that we'll actually do this is by utilizing the importance from previous slides. And if you remember, what the importance was saying is how much the quality will improve with additional iterations. Well, the reason why we choose this as in the importance is because the way that the MyPack controller is designed is that by default, if it has a miss on all of the iterations, it will default to a higher number of iterations. So we'll utilize this importance to figure out which inputs can be minimized first or can be reduced first. And we use this as a way of actually bounding the power consumption of the overall circuit. So the overall design of this MyPack controller is we take these importance weighted logic tables done in the previous stage. And what we'll do is we'll essentially perform a, no a normal logic reduction step, which is similar to something what Espresso would do. And then we check the power constraint. And if the power is not um, satisfactory, we'll actually reduce it additionally. And the way we do this is we do the approximate logic minimization. And we do this to actually reduce the predictor to at, at most the average of all the predictors in the controller. And so we'll, additionally, we'll repeat this multiple times until eventually this power constraint is met. And then we produce a final MyPack controller. So how do we actually perform this logic minimization? So in traditional logic minimization, we would have a series of cubes. And so we can consider this onset, for example, pink and the offset white. And so what we're trying to do is find a minimum exact cover of the onset. And so we would have, for example, the optimal solution for this um, problem would be this green cube, this purple cube, and this blue cube, giving us this solution. If, however, we're able to tolerate some error, for example, we can consider an importance for each input in this table, we can actually improve upon the solution by introducing small amounts of error. For example, if we introduce it, you know, an error and throw this input into the offset, we no longer need this cube. And similarly, we can actually introduce error on these two inputs, giving us a total error of 
to remove this green cube. And finally, if we remove this input right here, it'll give us a total error of 1.8, and we can remove this purple cube. And this will actually give us a new solution that is reduced, and is actually smaller than the original solution. So although this actually introduces some error into the actual circuit, the resulting combinational logic is actually two-thirds the cost of the original circuit. And in our case, we actually don't care about the small amount of error. It'll actually be negligible and it'll actually be fine from an application standpoint. So in this way, we can actually unspecify portions of the onset and actually reduce the power consumption of our controller to provide something that's more adequate for the, for the domain needed. So how do we actually do this? So the way that we actually do this is through an ILP. And essentially all this is saying is we have an objective which is to minimize the hardware cost of the cover. And that's all this is saying. We additionally have a coverage constraint, so we have to cover every element in the onset, except for the ones that we're going to um, put to the offset or unspecify. Finally, we have a violation constraint, which is the number of elements that we remove from the onset can't exceed this epsilon cost. And so with this, we can actually solve for the approximate cover of the onset and find this minimum cost cover. So now that we've actually designed our MyPack controller, we actually want to do our experiments. So for our experiments, we actually looked at supporting nine quality settings. The original iterative circuit actually only supported five quality settings, so we actually provide more settings. Additionally, we cap the power constraint of the controller at 10% of the target iter iterative circuit's power consumption. Finally, we, we looked at three applications. We looked at a logarithmic multiplier, we looked at two Taylor series approximations, a divider and an exponential function. And then we evaluated on the NAND gate library. And we had two baselines. We have a no error control baseline, and we also have a decision tree baseline. So the first experiment that we ran was looking at the error characterization. And this was for the divider. And so what we actually noticed, and this was actually slightly unexpected, is that this average case error was actually slightly improved in my pack over the baseline. Additionally, what we noticed is that the worst case error and standard deviation of errors was actually drastically improved from MyPack versus the original application. And so what we actually noticed here is that MyPack significantly improves the deviation of errors and provides much, much more reliable results um, than the original target circuit. Additionally, we looked at the energy comparison. And what we noticed is actually because MyPack supports additional quality settings, it provides finer grained uh, quality energy control. And so for many target quality, um, from an application's perspective, we can actually provide lower energy consumption than the original circuit. Additionally, MyPack actually has a very negligible energy overhead. And so what this means, and the way that we notice this, is if we look at where it saturates, it has very little overhead. It's almost negligible or zero. And so this is actually very good because even in the cases where my pack is you know, saturating and we're just using the default um, circuit, it's very little overhead and it's very little cost to the application. And so my pack actually significantly improves the energy quality trade-off compared to the baselines. The last experiment we looked at was power capping. And we looked at three quality settings. And so what we looked at here were for the divider, we looked at a target um, error rate of 8.3%, which was the error rate for the fixed two cycle predictor. Additionally, if we ran the uh, divider for three cycles, the average error was 2.1, and for four cycles, it was 1.2. And so we set those as our three quality targets for power capping. And for power capping, we had three um, power constraints. So there was no power constraint, 1% power constraint, and 0.5% power constraint. And so what we actually noticed here is that for all of our power constraints, the distribution is narrower. And so my pack actually beats the fixed iterative uh, circuit for all of the power constraints that we looked at. Additionally, the power capping reduces the controller overhead correctly by reducing the circuits that have the highest power consumption. And the way we notice this is some of the predictors actually had very low power overhead. For example, the two cycle predictor for my pack actually had very low controller overhead. And so it actually doesn't change much because it's not actually being reduced. 
However, when we look at the one for three cycle and four cycle, they actually do change slightly because they end up getting reduced um, for when the power constraint becomes harsher. And so what we notice is that my pack does work and it improves the error distributions. So overall, we, prevent, we presented my pack, which provided finer grain quality control. And this finer grain quality control actually um, reduces this, the standard deviation of errors and provides a much more reliable experience from iterative circuits, approximate circuits. Additionally, my pack is actually runtime adjustable and it provides finer grain quality settings than the ori original iterative circuit that it was looking at. Lastly, my pack is actually extremely lightweight and lightweight relative to the application and it's a combination of logic based on end that actually the power consumption is determined based on the application and the designer. Showed a 53% improvement in the worst case error with only a 1% energy overhead. And this is applicable to numerous error resilient applications, anything from machine learning to data processing to you know, image filtering, etc. Thank you so much. If you'd like to get into contact with me, my email is, uh, is uh, posted here. I've recently moved from UW-Madison, and additionally, this was supported by the National Science Foundation. Thanks again.